Attacked by a Yowie in a Yowie kill zone. This is the story of my first encounter with what I now understand to be a Yowie or Yowies. I was engaged in mining exploration activities in the far northeast of Australia. We had been sampling and following GPS sample lines for weeks, taking samples at precise locations in the bush. After a few months of work, I found myself alone in the camp with the activities coming to an end. I decided to stay there alone and follow some leads for further sampling into some of the more remote areas of that location. It's a truly magnificent, peaceful place, remote, it's lonely, and with a natural splendour second to none. During our activities, we saw kangaroos and emus, and the cattle would run through, as well as a few snakes. When you're walking in the bush for such lengths of time, you get to know your environment quite well. At certain unusual locations, there were very strange tree breaks which I noted. This would puzzle me, and I kept on wondering what on earth could do this. I'm talking about saplings, three inches, four inches thick in the stem, and they'd be snapped at the six to eight foot high mark. If you reached a hand up to that height and tried to do the same thing, it's not possible. And I've got a fairly sizable body frame, six foot and 120 k's. I could not break them. I decided to move camp to a location that I found was interesting with what seemed to be a large tree on a satellite image that seemed to have a large ring around it and it made it stand out. I termed this tree the tree of life for want of a better description as it just stood out and I was curious as to why it was alone. You can actually see it on the video screen coming up shortly. As I moved the vehicle through the scrub I went through a patch of very tall grasses with a few scattered saplings here and there and to the right of the vehicle ahead of me I noticed about like say 50 meters in front of me a darkness rapidly moving. I can't say what it was and then suddenly nothing. It was like a flash. As I got to that spot there was a three inch sapling that was freshly broken at about the five foot mark. I stopped the vehicle, I got out and wondered what could have done this. Maybe it was a big pig. It actually unnerved me as I'd, I'd literally seen it happen before my eyes. But then, did I really? The driving in was a medium hard four wheel drive. It was off road, there was no road there. And my concentration was on the best route to avoid any damage to the vehicle. I got out, I looked around, and I noticed a very foul stench, a foul smelling odour of something dead. But I didn't see any carcass. The sapling was on the edge of a small creek fan, and the car, it dropped off the edge, about a metre into the creek, bed right next to the sapling. I carried on for approximately another two kilometres further, and I came to a lovely campsite and set up camp. Daily, I would go walk about, and I noticed more and more these broken saplings. They all seemed to point in the same direction towards an area that was encircled with hundreds and hundreds of fallen trees from a bushfire in the distant past. This made the area very impenetrable. This is located above the base camp, and I've marked it for you to see. I was thinking this is quite an amazing coincidence. The brakes were always fresh brakes. It's an appearance as though they were just done within minutes of me getting there. Some days in the heat of the afternoon I would head back to camp and cook lunch and have a rest. And during this time I would get stones falling in the creek beside me. Someone's throwing stones at me? No, that's not possible. There's nobody here. Maybe it's a branch falling off a tree or some other explanation. But no, it was stones. 
In trying to work out the original trajectory, it was nearly impossible. I picked up a stone, I threw it in the direction of what I perceived the direction it came from, and this seemed to stop any more rocks falling. I was also starting to notice a foul smell at times that would waft past me. An extreme deathly stench. They would come and just as fast as it came it would disappear. Positioning my camp chair I would watch the surroundings as though I was asleep. Nothing, nothing moved. The rocks and the smell would give direction from potential air travel direction, yet nothing was visible. At times I would start walking towards the direction of the stench, and that stench changed daily in direction. No carcasses were visible anywhere. As I would go out exploring daily by foot, I started to notice more and more strange occurrences. There were so many cattle bones and kangaroo bones, it was like it was like a kill zone. I never filmed any of this, as I didn't think of it as any importance at the time, but it was certainly on my mind each night as I relaxed at the camp at the day's end with a beer. During my walks, I always heard loud wood knocks. The kind of sounds you might get from hitting a solid heart tree with a baseball bat or an axe maybe. Sometimes these knocks would be no more than 20 metres beside me. But the growth of the forest was so dense it is impossible to see what's causing it. And with the heat and effort involved, certainly invest to investigate is difficult. I came to the conclusion I was being watched without a doubt. By what? I didn't have any idea. Was it human? Was it animal? I don't know. It certainly wasn't from the cattle station and there were no others in the area at all, let alone people moving through this densely wooded area. It just wasn't possible. After some days passed, I went for a hike into the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life is now coming centred onto the satellite image on your video. The Tree of Life was about a two kilometre hike to get to, but it wasn't possible to get there with a vehicle. The Tree of Life was certainly unique. I sat under it for some hours in the midday heat, and then as the sun passed into a shadow, I then stood up, gave it a hug, and began to walk back to the camp. I've never been afraid of anything in the bush before, and I didn't feel a need to be afraid now, having lived there for some months. I felt that I knew it well. I was at peace with my surroundings, and I was enjoying this time. Whatever this place was, it was special. Maybe the tree had grown up and poisoned off others around it in a circular manner. It's not that big a tree, but it has a clearly defined circular zone around it. Each side of the Tree of Life is surrounded by extremely thick sapling forest. It's so tight you can't hardly move within it, and it's dark. I walked into it at one spot, and I can tell you it was a really uneasy feeling. I was being watched. By what, I don't know. I had an uneasy feeling, and uneasy feelings are never good, so I let my intuition take me back out again. I arrived back at the camp just on dark and I cooked dinner without a vent. At the campsite, it was a junction pinch of three creeks joining through two rock escarpments into a flat clay-based pan area. Cattle would rarely come through the area. They always walked around it. I found it rather strange, but when I did when they did venture into the uh, zone, they would start to run at about 200 metres out before these pinches, as they were, they were being spooked by something. It wasn't me, and as they passed me, they had a look of WTF, what are you doing here? They wouldn't stop at all until well out of the area. 
I found this interesting. As in many other places, cattle are friendly. They tend to relax near my camps, even bedding down and feeding without any stress at all. But this place, it was different for sure. During my exploration walks, I noticed at the head of these short valleys and creeks, which ended in thick growth, there were multiple cattle bones, and I was starting to think to myself, this does look like a killing zone. I also noticed several large femur bones from cattle, and they had been snapped into two. And this in itself is more than amazing. I mean, what on earth can do that? The only thing that comes to mind is a lion, a hyena. But is there something in Australia that can cat break a cattle's femur bone into two pieces? Maybe during mating. These short valleys were like a natural holding pen. And once there, any cattle would be isolated, which means they have to be herded into these areas. At the entrance to this area, and a mere 80 metres or so from the camp, there were some sapling trees. They were all sort of in a line. And these broken sapling trees pointed into that dark area you can see on the map now, centred on the map. The ground was a soft slate surface, really, really unique. It's a special zone. It was like stepping back into the Jurassic period, and it's like a semi-hanging valley. It's very amazing. I realised that no cattle were moving through this area at all. The area was completely untouched. Daily as I went out and came back along the same path, I noticed that another one of these saplings would be broken, and another one, and another one. It's so puzzling. I'm about six feet tall. I decided to jump up and swing my entire body weight onto one of these saplings and try and break it. I just managed to snap it. The one I broke was pointing in another direction. Silly me. And I remember thinking, oops, whatever is doing this must weigh well over 200 kilos and it must be able to reach 8 feet and break this 2, 3 or 4 inch saplings with ease. There were no tracks on the ground ever. That night I was tired. I had a long walk that day and I went to sleep at about 10pm after sitting watching the stars and some strange lights which were kind of like UFOs. The night was extremely quiet, not a breath of wind, there was no moon. You could hear a pin drop sort of thing and there was just no movement anywhere. You couldn't hear any kangaroos, nothing came into that location. I have a rooftop tent on the top of my four-wheel drive, which puts me up at a fair height. At around 2am, I was awoken by the strangest of sensations. I had a strong neon blue light which seemed to be within my tent and without, outside the tent. I slapped my face to see if I was awake. And the strangest of all, I was being vibrated at the same time. It was like an uncontrollable ultrasonic-like movement towards the zipper door of my tent. My entire body, it was though I was being taken out of the tent by an ultrasonic sound wave. I couldn't control my body, it was sliding hard against the tent door and I could see the zipper was still intact and my feet were hard against that side of the tent. As I sort of got to grips with what was happening, it was like an incredible scream. There was this howl right by my head at the other end of the tent wall. It seemed like such a long time. But then suddenly the vibration stopped, the blue lights disappeared, and everything was black. No moon. It was a moonless night, pitch black. I was frozen. I was reaching for my hunting knife, which I kept at arm's length in the tent, and I was frozen. I thought, damn, I must be awake. I've got my knife in my hand. I was ready. I was thinking, what the WTF is this? 
If it came through the side wall of my tent, I was going to slam this knife into its head. I didn't dare make a sound. I could hear something breathing right by my head. I didn't sit up. My head was on a heavy pillow against that side wall of the rooftop tent. So there was some cushioning there between me and whatever it was that was sniffing me. I didn't move. I was thinking, what the hell this is? It's pissed off. It's angry. It's really upset. Lay still. Maybe you'll live. Whatever it was, was at the head height of the rooftop tent. It was screaming at me again. I could feel the vibrations of the sound of the scream and uh, that smell. That same foul stench I'd noticed for days was coming through the canvas. After what seemed to be like ages, I felt my head being lifted up on the pillow and then down gently. It was sort of like lifting me up and letting me down. And then suddenly it was gone in an instant. I heard, shall I say, soft, large, bipedal steps moving away what I perceived to be the direction of the tree of life. I unzipped my sleeping bag, I reached for the spotlight, I pulled on some clothes and I unzipped the tent door and I slipped down the ladder as quietly as I could. I went around the camp, I shone the spotlight into the bush all around and there was nothing, totally nothing, just the blackness of the night. It was such a black night it was suffocating. The spotlight I had was extremely powerful. You normally expect eyes to shine back, but there was nothing shining back at me anywhere. Up the trees and the land and the bushes, nothing. Everything was still, no noise, no light, no movement, nothing. The next morning I carefully checked around the camp for tracks. Again, nothing. Before I sleep each night, I always brush around the camp if there's been any cattle through so that I can see what's passed in the night, whether it be kangaroos, snakes or, or whatever. Everything was clean, just as I'd brushed it off. I did pick up indistinct print pads that were moving towards the southwest. These were more like pressure pad prints, broken grass, twig, etc. Nothing that I could identify. Nothing you could say, this is a track of X, Y, or Z. And this, frankly, it shook me up. It bothers me to this day. The next day, I simply packed up and I left the area. I thought, whatever this was, it could have easily killed me, without a doubt. I had to sort out in my mind what had just happened, and I started to begin to piece all the events together. Everything I'd seen and the experience I'd had that night. I believe this was a Yowie if not several Yowies. And this started me on a quest to locate and hunt for the Yowie. Stranger as it is, I've not been back to the location and I would not go back there alone for sure. The area is a private lease cattle station and the current holders do not want the location made public. And I respect that. I do hope to return at some time in the near future, however. What do I take from this encounter? I'm a highly experienced bushman. I've encountered many animal species and I know how to track, I know how to hunt and I know how to kill. Whatever this is, it's better than me. The creature must be, I estimate, over eight feet tall. It must have tremendous strength. It has to weigh over 200 kilos and it can see in the dark. The blue light I experienced, maybe this was part of the frequency of its vocalization and the fact it was so close to my head, maybe it created a fluorescence in the air about me and the vibration like an ultrasonic cleaner, maybe it's part of this vocalization too. Maybe it was a UFO trying to beam me up, I really don't know. It's got to have camouflage second to none. I do believe the fact that I broke one of the saplings in the lineup and maybe in the wrong direction, I created a challenge to the alpha creature that could not go unactioned. The fact that I stayed silent and calm during the attack with no reaction, 
I think it shows that animal was asserting its control in the area. And frankly, it could have killed me easily for sure. It wanted me gone. I was in its hunting zone. I was disturbing its habitat. I left. Your thoughts are welcomed. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my real life encounter. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Cheers.